In this section, we did something called logarithmic equations. So that's an equation that has logarithms in it. And here's an example. <clears throat> the log of x squared base 5 is equal to the log of 81 base 5. Well, if the logs are the same, if the base of the log, if it, it's 5 and 5, the base, the log is the same, the base is the same, everything's the same, that means what's inside the log has to be the same. That means that the x squared and 81 have to be equal to each other, which gives us a much simpler equation now. Namely, x squared equals 1. If I can get x squared to equal 1, then my log equation becomes equal. So what's awesome about this is that even though it starts out as a very complex-looking equation, it gets down to a very straightforward type of equation we've seen many times. In fact, we can see immediately that the answer here is x equals plus or minus 9. And if I plug plus or minus 9 into the original equation, that just becomes 81. Remember, even if I put a negative 9 and I square it, it becomes a positive 81. So either way, we're good. Let's just do that anyway. So if I plug in x equals positive 9, I get the log of 9 squared equals 81, which is log 81 equals log 81, all base 5. Check, check, check. So that's good. And if I put in x equals negative 9, I get the log base 5 of negative 9 squared is equal to log base 5 of 81. But negative 9 squared is positive 81, so I get log 5 of positive 81 equals log 5 of positive 81. Check. See how that check just magically appeared? Awesome. Before we go on to our next example, I just want to point out that, and I want you to notice that the 5 wasn't really that relevant. The only thing that mattered is that 5 and 5 is that the, is that the bases matched. It didn't matter. If it, in this problem, it really didn't matter if it was base 5, base 17, base 92. It didn't really matter because all I did, got was x squared equals 81. Here's a problem where the actual log does matter. The actual base, I mean, does matter. Here, now, in this problem, the, the, it's in base 3, and the, th the base will matter. How can you tell? that the, How do you know? Because I have log, log, and here I have a plane 2. You see, if I had logs all around, all I care is, well, let's, uh, let's see why it matters. So this, first we're going to use our log properties to combine this, to condense this, these, uh, this log. So I have the log base 3 of x times x minus 8 equals 2, but I don't have any other, see, see before we had log, log, and we just set the two, inside, the two inside parts equal, but there is no other inside part. So I'm going to use here a property of logarithm. By definition, this means that 3 to the second power equals this right here. So I'm going to rewrite that. x times x minus 8 equals 3 to the second power because that's the base 3 and that's the uh, exponent. Well, uh, this now is going to turn out to be a simple quadratic. I'm just going to uh, expand out the parentheses and bring the, the 3 squared to the other side. And we're going to, it's going to leave us with quadratic, which is very easy to factor, and here's my two solutions, x equals 9, x equals negative 1. However, I need to check both solutions, because in a log problem, sometimes a solution, even if, even if, usually, you know, we always used to say check your answer, because maybe you made a mistake, but here, even if you didn't make a mistake, you have to check the answer, because it's possible that an answer you get at the end may not uh, fit into the original problem. So let's check them both. When I plug in x equals 9, I get log into the original equation, I plug in x equals 9, I get the log of uh, 3 of 9 plus the log 3 of 9 minus 8. Well, that's just the log of 9 base 3 is 2, because 3 to the second power equals 9. This is the log of 1, but log of 1 is always 0, so I get 2 plus 0 equals 2, check. 2 equals 2, check. However, when I, ch when I plug in x equals negative 1, my other solution, um, well, I get the log base 3 of negative 1. Well, guess what? We have to stop it right here because there's no such thing as a log of negative 1 because negative 1 can never go into negative 1. Negative numbers are never part of the domain of the log function. Therefore, we have to just, this whole thing just doesn't work and I have to reject the possibility of x equals negative 1 and just go, my only solution is x equals 9. And again, it's not that negative 1 was a mistake. We did all the algebra correctly. It's just that sometimes when you when you have problems, especially as the math gets more advanced, you're going to generate solutions which won't work back in the, they won't satisfy the conditions of the original problem. And that's it. I'm out.